ferry, which in normal times plies between Hull and the continent, was on the last stage of her curious voyage as a floating prisoner of war camp. But it took time. The Argentines wanted no publicity for the arrival here of the prison ship. And it was nearly dark when the Norland passed the converted ferry which was to take the prisoners home. Aboard, the Argentines were put to work cleaning up the ship. The great majority of them were in their teens. One was only 15. Several had been frostbitten before their capture, but the Red Cross found no great complaints about conditions on board. By morning, the Norland was on her way back to the islands. The Hull Ferry has never carried a stranger set of passengers, and there'll be more to come. On her way out, she passed the hospital ship Herald with 60 British wounded aboard, the latest arrival in what the Navy now calls the Montevideo Run. Unlike the Norland's arrival, everything was out in the open. There are no great restrictions today about filming the Herald. There is, after all, nothing wrong from the British point of view about allowing people at home to see pictures of the wounded men being brought off. But Uruguayan caution still persists. The government here has ruled that there can be no interviews with anyone from the Herald, even though they can be filmed. The usual cheerfulness prevailed, though some of the men carried painful evidence of their wounds. And yet again, the cumbersome process of shuffling wounded men halfway across the world was working with remarkable smoothness.